So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Perfect. Thank you so much for the confirmation, everyone. So, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself to you all first. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now where I have been leading the global design and development teams for designing enterprise solutions for different industry verticals, including insurance, retail, banking, pharmaceutical, aviation, and location-based services. And mostly I've been active in the markets of India, US, Canada, Singapore, Australia, and other Southeast Asian markets so far. And in terms of the training front, I have been working as a corporate trainer as well since last five years where I have been training the workforce of companies including Accenture, Mercedes, EY, CapGemini, Adobe, Credit Suisse, NIT, Grab, among others, in training them on different technologies, specifically in cloud computing, on AML, and big data engineering technologies. So that's in a nutshell of what I've been doing for more than 13 years now. All right, so let's get started. So the main agenda for today's session, we are going to discuss about the project management, what exactly it is, and the methodologies used in project management. We are going to you to discuss when to use the PM techniques, how to choose the right tools and technologies, and what are the various project management tools available out there in the market. We are going to discuss about these things one by one as we proceed further. All right, so. If we talk about the risk, now if we talk about the project management, then risk and the uncertainty, they all are part of any project, correct? And as a project manager, when we are working on any project, our goal is to minimize the risk and increase the success rate through a systematic process, which is required and which will allow us to have a better control on the project development from its conception till its delivery. And such a practice is called as project management. Now this project management, uh, again, this entire discussion on the topic is going to give us a good insight of how the how the project management is structured, what is the process involved in it, and how we can get started. And so, if you talk about project first, now basically, if you talk even before we talk about project management, if you talk about project, then project is basically undertaken to produce a unique product or any solution. Now. We can have a project for completing endless number of tasks, correct? So basically we have again here, we also have to make sure that the entire project should be having a definite beginning and ending, whereas unique means the final product should be specific to a project. So a project that doesn't have the properties for where we don't have a timeline, where we don't have a specific solution that we have to develop, it cannot be considered as a full-fledged project. So basically, if you talk about project management, then project management is basically a discipline that helps us in implementing various processes, methods, knowledge, skills, and experience for achieving the objectives of unique project. So one thing that we have to understand that project management is nothing like usual management. And one key factor which differentiates these two are the project management has a final deliverable and a different timeline whereas management is an ongoing process and projects have always have to adapt to the market changes now in past project management followed a triple constraint so we can say an iron triangle for example we had the time so in past what happened we had to work with the time so we have to make sure we are aligning the time cost and scope and then we have to simply bridge the gap. We have to simply make sure that we are keeping a balance in the time that we that the entire project needs, the cost of the project, and the scope of the project. And that's how we maintain a simple balance that we call as quality. That we refer to as quality. So basically, this is referred as the triple constraints or the RN triangle. So it's a combination of three key components, as we had discussed. So time simply ensures that the total, it simply is the total time we need to deliver any project. Cost involves the total amount of money required to create a product. And then we have the scope, which is basically the total amount of work that needs to be done before we can finish the product. And the quality is used to, again, at the end, quality needs to be maintained. So we have to make sure that that is not compromised with any of the above three factors. That's a part of the golden rule that we had to follow 
as a part of project management we have management again management is an ongoing process now it is not having any deadline right so again there's no deadline that we have to meet whereas in project management we have a different timeline that means we have to complete the project and suppose there are multiple portions so all of the given portions have to be completed at a given timeline whereas management is not having any specific timeline it's a complete ongoing process project management is basically a system of practice techniques rules by those we develop a project and there are multiple phases like we have project planning designing the work breakdown structure schedule planning financial planning and work authorization so it's a complete process and and the entire work has to be completed in that particular process itself so if you talk about the methodologies again they are multiple they are multiple project management methodologies that includes the traditional one so the waterfall model has been one of the oldest model that we that we have then followed by the pmi as in the pm pok model then we have the agile model where we have agile scrum kanban xp apf and then we have the change management where we have ecm we have the process space where we have lean we have sigma we have the lean six sigma and then we have prince 2 and then we have the prism as well so again they all are different type of exam again then they, they, they all are different type of methodologies that we can apply now if we talk about the entire different methods here first of all if you talk about the traditional path so in traditional we had waterfall so waterfall was they were there were no much iterations as in any project that we had to develop by waterfall it isn't required to have that much of changes and the feedbacks if the feedbacks were delayed the entire updates were delayed then that was not an issue so that exactly is what we have as a part of waterfall. So in waterfall we have multiple phases like we have the requirement analysis we have design implementation verification and maintenance so when we talk about the requirement uh, the requirement analysis then the requirement analysis uh, simply made sure that we are gathering the requirement we are working with the stakeholders and understanding what exactly they need as an output of this entire development then we had the design phase now under design phase we make sure that we are designing the entire blueprint of the application to meet the requirements. Then in the implementation phase, we made sure that the entire testing is also done for to ensure that there are no errors and the product meets the client's requirement. And then we have the verification. So in this phase, the final round of testing is done for the, for the systematic recovery and debugging of the fast before the product is delivered and then towards the end we had maintenance which is basically a lifetime process that, in, that makes sure that the entire support in terms of maintenance and any kind of breakdown is given to the end client as a part of maintenance simple and easy applications where we don't have to perform much iteration much changes it's good for executive and management control it quickly identifies the project requirements from the start and the specific deliverables from the each stage are also specified and then it is best for short-term projects with not much iterations required and then if you talk about cons then the requirement needs are again upfront and frozen because again at the end the requirement changes are not going to be accommodated as a part of the waterfall model because we have to meet a complete timeline and the process of making the changes incorporating any changes in between is not open in waterfall and the duration is also not going to be possible once we have moved to the next state and it cannot begin the next step until the current step is over so there's a lot of wait time and this involves this in simply increases the project delivery timeline and here we are if you talk about solving the problems that we have faced for example there's a bug in the application so we have to wait for the entire cycle to be completed then only we can work on rectifying those issues as soon as possible so for waterfall model does a change in circumstances like customer experience or feedback results in restarting so if we have to start again we cannot reiterate any single process here we have to start from the scratch again and that's why the entire delivery of any kind of bug fixes is also longer in waterfall model if you talk about how about the enhancements again enhancement again it has to be thought of it, it has to be started back from the same project requirement analysis part so then only we can work on the design implementation and the verification state because we cannot accommodate any other changes in between that's how it works in waterfall 
Next we have perch. So again, basically it's a program evaluation review technique. So perch charts are tools that is used that are used to plan tasks within a project. It makes scheduling and coordinating team members to accomplish the work easier. And basically it's a graphical illustration of a project as a network diagram consisting of numbered nodes. If you talk about the pros and cons of PERT, then again, pro, the PERT method is, is used for better activity analysis, where we can break down each and every activity. It is required for improved department coordination, and it is generally focused on the what if analysis. It is again, sub, it is again subject, it, it does the subjective analysis instead of the activity analysis. Again, it is time focused. It is resource intensive as a part of the PERT model. Next, we have the CPM. CPM refers to critical path method. So CPM is a step-by-step -step project management technique for process planning. It defines critical and non-critical tasks with the aim of preventing time frame problems and process bottlenecks. Uh, it is best for projects which consist numerous activities that interact in a, compli in a complex manner. For example, let's say we have task A. Now task A may have two different dependencies. And again, the other task again has a dependency on the other task, right? So again, these different dependencies and again, when the one, one process is dependent upon the other process to be initiated or completed, then that is a part of critical path method. And if you, if you talk about the pros and cons of this particular model, then it, now since we have multiple dependencies and a complete tree structure followed, so it provides better scheduling of different processes. And here we can prioritize which process should be completed first and which one should be at, the, at second, third or fourth level. And here we can have an exact estimation of time and cost. The main cons of this entire method is have experience in order to meet the time, meet the deadlines, how we have to prioritize different jobs so that we can get the job done. We can get the entire, we can see the end results and that too as quickly as possible. And that requires time. And then we have again, it is inflexible. That means again, everything has to be defined earlier because again, at the end, if we make any changes, then that is going to impact the entire, the, or it means all the other processes as well. And it's difficult to manage, especially for the beginners without any experience. And designing CPM itself is time consuming because again, here we have multiple, here we have multiple tasks. And again, they all are divided in a complicated manner. So it requires a good amount of time and efforts to design these kind of solutions. Then we have CCPM. CCPM refers to critical change project management. So CCPM is one of the newer project management methodologies. It works backward from the end goal. And in this, we need to recognize the deliverables. And again, when we do recognize deliverables, so we can use the past experience to map out the tasks required to complete the project. So for example, here we have multiple activities as activity A, B, C, G, F. So here we can define the entire order in which the, it has to be completed. And just like every other tool, we also have pros and cons for the chain project management as well. We have now this entire platform, this entire method is resource efficient. We get the least amount of resource wastage when we are implementing this, the end goal as that is exactly is the end goal that we have to work on. And then it simply removes the bottlenecks and it reduces the variations that we may also for any project. We ask this is not suitable for multi project environment and the delays in pushing the updates or incorporating the feedbacks that has been that has been routine by has been received by the deployment team that can be passed on to the developers. Not we can say not in a real time scenario or that it, or there is a good amount of delay till the time the code bugs reach the developers then only they can start working on it and that's why the entire update is also delayed as a main con of the CCPM methodology. All right, so next we have the PMI methods as in PMI refers to again here we have mainly the methodology that we can apply here is the project management book of knowledge. Here we can apply project management book of knowledge. So if we talk about this project management book of knowledge, we have multiple phases with us. So first of all, we have the planning process. So now when we not, this is not exactly a methodology, but again, a guide to a project management. So basically it breaks down the entire project management into five different phases. We have the planning. First of all, we have initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, closing phase. 
so if you talk about the first phase as in the initiation phase here so it's a first and most vital step in the life cycle of the project so in this process we we, are, we simply you know, define the initial scope of the project as well as all the resources that are going to be used they are committed here and that's why that's why this performing in this process group will ensures the success of our project and then planning phase now in the planning phase so basically in this process group an appropriate level of detail is planned for the project it's done to plan time cost and resources and basically it helps us in estimating the work needed and managed risk effectively during the execution of any particular project and then we have the executing part here so again in terms of execution the process group consists of process which are used to complete the work defined in the project management plan and it's about achieving the project's objectives and then we have the monitoring and controlling phase here so this process group involves tracking reviewing and regulating the performance of the project so in order to deliver a successful project well, we have to make sure again that we are monitoring and controlling all the parameters and it's an essential task that needs to be using this we can keep a track of multiple baselines like we have time cost quality we can take up we can keep a track of these and we can identify the prevention problems quickly and take all the corrective measures to rectify them and then at last we have the exit phase or we can say the closing phase so this process group is an important part of project management so here we can perform now here we can say it is used to finalize all the project activities to complete the given project and this entire process means that all the activities across all the different groups again they are bundled together and again that's how we can simply make sure we are having a better control on the entire output and the process that we have chosen for completing that particular output so if we talk about the pros and cons then the main advantage of this entire model for the project management book of knowledge is it easily breaks down the entire pm steps and it, it follows a comprehensive approach for each and every phases and is well suited to iterate the development environment but here the project governance is around the stakeholders and it simply treats the project as a single entity whereas they can be multiple they now we may be working on a complete microservice based project where there are multiple dependencies that we have to take care of continuous iteration between development testing uh, between development and testing throughout the entire life cycle of the project that exactly is what we have under agile so in agile again all the iterations are of same time during or we can say between two to eight fees mostly they are all in the same time between two to two to eight weeks so the planning and the launching they are in a well-defined format but the design development and testing the methods being completely quickly as possible and here we can predict the cost and schedule based on the current work and the amount of work that is left in terms of the cons it becomes not clear on how we have to proceed and here it has no clear end in terms of iterations in terms of testing report that we can that we are going to see that particular component not at not the entire project as a whole and in terms of scrum again scrum is basically a lightweight process of continuous iteration of development and testing throughout the entire project life cycle and it easily manages complex software and product development using iterative and incremental practice so the main advantage of scrum of following the scrum methodology it improves the quality of the product it offers a quick product release it increases the roi and the project control it increases the customer satisfaction in the end and it increases the progress visibility and exposure and in terms of course there are no definite scope defined in scrum it needs experienced team members so here we also need to have a scrum master we also need to have the scrum team that needs to work together and is not suited for large and complex project again this is a suitable for small to master max medium scale projects all right basically in scrum we can have a quick product release so here we can simply break down the entire project into smaller components and then we can quickly release those products by defining exact timeline and how many methods are going on how many processes are going to be involved in individual 
scrum so basically if we have a if we have to perform a one complete task so we, we divide that complete large task into smaller tasks and then we define the timeline for each and every task and once it when once done we can quickly release it but again here in terms of the agile again okay, here getting a complete clarity on the overall project is a, is much harder and again there is no clear end because it's more like a continuous process as compared to scrum scrum we can say it is good for small scale projects and agile are used uh we can say optimal for the continuous project with where we don't have like a maintenance project or we have to work on continuously adding some features on any particular project so we can work on agile and when we are working on small scale project where we want to get the best roi plus we also want to break we want to have a quick release then we can go for scrum but in scrum we do need to have a complete experience team whereas in agile even a less experienced team can work on the agile methodologies and then we have kanban so basically it's a process for managing and creation of products with an emphasis on continuous delivery of the amount of work in progress to the team's capacity now in a kanban process they are physical cards where which are called as kanban that can move through the process from start to finish and it basically aims to keep a constant play of lower kanban it optimizes inventory and output it, it minimizes the waste and scraps it adds the flexibility in production it reduces the overall cost and it simply improvises the responsiveness to the customer and then we can work with the xp so xp is what xp is basically the extreme programming where we can uh, basically it's an agile software development framework which aims to, pr to produce high quality software and of higher quality of life of the development team and is characterized by short work sprints frequent iterations and constant collaboration with the stakeholders then we have at last we have the apf which is referred as adaptive project framework it is structured and systematic process of project management and using this we can gradually improve the decision and practices by learning from outcomes of the decisions that we take at previous stage in the given project so basically here we can evaluate and learn we can again we have a complete life curve to adjust and again uh, plan it and again simply work on execution of the current statements as a part of the management then we have the change management so basically this methodology helps in identifying the event change that can affect the project outcome so it is uncertainty modeling approach practiced by the project managers to identify and eradicate the uncertain events so basically if you talk about the pros of this change management that it involves the event-based resource allocation risk mitigation provides visualization to the chain of events it enables the use of quantitative analysis models and it provides a more realistic project but again the concept assembly leads to multiple reputations and again in terms of adding or improvising the product we cannot do that easily as compared to the other methodologies used when we are launching any particular source we can define tags as well for example here we can define now we want this particular server to be having a tag suppose as project type so again here we can define multiple tags so that when we have actually deployed multiple resources then we can group all the resources together by using a common tag we can easily do that we have extreme project management so basically XPM is the model that proceeds from phase to phase based on the limited knowledge of gold as well as a solution and is used for managing very complex and very uncertain projects it's an open elastic and again it follows the that approach and it follows the principles of human interaction management where we start with the scope phase then we launch monitor and control and then we simply iterate the entire project as a part of the requirement so basically if you choose the right methodology then we can choose first of all we have to evaluate our current project we have to evaluate the team we have to evaluate the organization then we have to evaluate the tools and then stakeholders so it's basically a five-step process which allows us to choose the right methodology so first of all if we are talking about evaluating the project then we have to first of all talk uh, think about the financial budget that we have for the project that we are going to work on we have to focus on the timeline provided the size and complexity of any given project the project type and the industry and then we are going to talk about the stakeholders expectation as well then we have to work on evaluation of the teams where we have to 
now we have to make sure that we are bringing experienced team members because again at the end the entire team has to be aware on what kind of what should be the process that we have to follow when we are working on the management on different management methodologies we have to be clear on that part and then we have to train them for the project it have we have to simply make sure that we are preparing the entire team and then the team geographic locations also has to be taken care of because again they should not be remotely located again we have to make sure that in case the meeting is required to be set up then the meetings can then the project meetings can easily be held as a part of the requirement and then third point is we have to evaluate the organization where we have to make sure that we are taking care of the organization culture that I mean what is a way of working that we have in the current company how much flexible we are in terms of incorporating the changes or how much the company is flexible in terms of changes in the team size in the budget and what are the available resources to us what has been the past records of success or failure and the experience or in terms of team members and what is the maturity level in, of the company that we are working on and then we have to evaluate the tools as well so in terms of, of tools evaluation then we have to simply have a complete understanding of what is the resource that we are having the access to and how we can and how those tools they do compare with specific methodologies that we are going to use and the last point is we have to work on checking the stakeholders involvement and the requirement of those stakeholders that needs to be fulfilled by using this methodology now in terms of project management tools there are multiple tools that we have we have Trello, we have worky we have basecam scoro podio we have zoho event collab workbook project jira we have the nutcash we have uh, we have proof of notion so there are multiple tools out there there are some selective tools that we use for example we have the work now here they're right here it is basically a powerful online project management software which provides full visibility so basically it provides a full visibility in terms of having much better management and we can work with and we can get the job done quickly and efficiently based on the co-located and distributed groups then we have the asana as well so again basically it's a it's a tool used for web and mobile projects management application which is specifically designed to help teams to track their work it's simple to get started but powerful enough to run our entire business and it provides plenty of features that can help the companies and track work in a to track a work in a way that fits every team's workflow and workflow by providing transparency and clarity to the teammates then we can work on trello as well so trello is basically a web-based project management application which was developed by the greek software and uh, again currently it is all currently it is owned by alteration so now this is the most popular tools used by almost every fortune 500 companies and they are a good tool for collaboration on any project uh, it is flexible and is easy to use which we can use for keeping a track for every detail whether we are talking about the big picture or, or any manual detail that we have to focus on just like we have in the kanban style then we also have Jira as well. So again, Jira has been listed here. So Jira we have. So Jira is basically a project management tool that is more popularly used for bug tracking and issue tracking. So using Jira, we can easily plan, track, and manage the agile software development projects by customizing the entire workflow and team collaboration. It is useful for providing special features for agile software development which will help the team stay focused on delivering iterative and incremental value as fast as possible with customizable scrum boards and then we can also make use of Basecamp. we can make use of zoho as well depending upon the requirement that we may have so as we discussed so again we also have the Basecamp. so Basecamp is also one of the real-time application that we can use Basecamp here it's basically a real-time communication tool which is going to help us in staying on the same page and it is less for traditional project management task it is basically a reliable service that offers a simple setup and short learning time along with the to-do list and calendaring due dates and file sharing functions which you can use for keeping a track of all the priorities and actionable items becomes much easier and then we have zoho so zoho is based on reports so we can create a complete 
visualize report with collaborating with our team members clients vendors or consultants seamlessly then we have also tool available called as podio so again podio is basically a cloud-based collaboration service which is powered by citrix and it is a social collaboration tool where we can use it to build applications and set up workspaces to support the preferred workflows and become more effective uh, it is the perfect tool for enhancing the collaborations as it simply allows us to connect with colleagues via internet via internal social networks and a given chart and then we have the freed camp so freed camp is also one of the popular tools where it's basically a web-based project management tool and it can allow us to it can be used as a single or multiple user base and is used for collaborating using the cloud computing so this tool is preferred when we want to when this tool is generally preferred for those users who need to have a better control of the projects resources budgets time etc so freecam mainly helps us in improvising the workflow in determining our targets and achieving our goals within the specified time and the given budget and then we have scoro so scoro is basically again a detailed tool like we have it's basically a comprehensive solution which indicates all the features that are needed in any project management software so using scoro we can manage the entire company in one place and it simply unifies our entire dispatch systems and countless spreadsheets into a single tool uh, it is basically a software as a service solution for professional and creative services and then we, at last we have microsoft project which is basically a portfolio management tool by microsoft itself so that's it for the discussion on different methodologies and tools that we can make use of thank you so much for being a part of this entire session guys take care bye bye